Thank you, everyone, for sticking it out to this uh, last uh, session of the day, or almost last session of the day. I know there's a wrap-up, too. Uh, most of what I was going to say has, has been covered, so I'm glad that we're all kind of on the same sort of wavelength. And you can now see my presentation as either a time for a nap or just as like a nice summary of the rest of the day. Um, so... And I'm told it's this green one. There we go. I just wanted to start by um, by just acknowledging that that this tidal wave of interest in social needs through the healthcare setting are, is very exciting, and also that uh, to acknowledge that many of the people in this room are already doing the sorts of research that's going to fill some of the gaps that I'm going to talk about. Um, but I was told to talk about gaps, so I will. Um, one gap that Dr. Fickenberg actually touched on is that we have this whole hodgepodge of, of social determinant of health, mainly screeners meant for use in clinical settings. But we have less research on um, developing, validating, and standardizing what tools should be used to measure social determinants of health for research. And having a set of good standard tools would be helpful. It would allow us to better compare our results across studies. It would also be helpful for researchers, say, who um, social determinants isn't their primary primary interest, maybe they're doing cardiovascular disease or, or diabetes research, but they would be able to take a set of, um, of measures if they were easy and incorporate them in their studies. One place I've seen this done well is through NIDA, the Clinical Trials Network, has what they call a set of common data elements, which are available online, and it's kind of recommended research instruments to be used for substance use domains. By and large, most of the studies we have on um, social needs in healthcare still remain cross-sectional, and there are a number of challenges to that. Um, one that I've been thinking about a lot lately is around confounding variables, especially because we know that these social needs, they often travel together, they often have common upstream precipitants. Um, and so just to give an example, and this is nothing against food insecurity, this is just for illustration. And of course, all of Seth's studies on food insecurity are perfect. Um, but just for the sake of illustration, say you do a study, a cross-sectional study, and you find that food insecurity is associated with bad health. But what if really it's just that food insecurity happens to travel along with housing instability? And it's actually the housing housing instability that's, result, that's uh, related to the bad health, but the authors didn't uh, adequately adjust for that. Or maybe it's some upstream undefined factor that's actually related to the bad health. And it's not just academics, it's important because if we think that the driver is the food insecurity, then our interventions will look like this. But if we think our driver is something else, then we would look towards different interventions. And so in general, I think that we need more information on what really are the social need drivers um, of health outcomes and of different health outcomes. And we need more information on what pathways they're working through. Uh, we should be doing more work looking at mediators, potential moderators, et cetera. The other thing, of course, is that cross-sectional studies can't really tell us much about causality or directionality. Um, of course, longitudinal research would help with the, with the directionality issue. Uh, it would be nice if we had some large prospective cohort studies over several years where we interviewed people every six months and whatnot. Uh, in the absence of that sort of time and money, um, some people have done creative work, including some people in this room using administrative data. A lot of the administrative data sets that we often use as health services researchers are sort of lacking in robust social determinant measures. Um, but there are ways that you can combine health services data with data from other sectors. Something that I do in my own research is to um, do patient collected data at a baseline time, so surveying or interviewing thousands of patients and getting robust social determinant information at time one and then getting their consent to link their data and look at their data going forward in um, the administrative health records um, to see what effects the social determinants have on downstream outcomes. And in general, um, like uh, Dr. Fickenberg said, I think that we need more intervention research. Uh, we're at the point now where we need more information on what works. And I could talk about a whole lot about interventions. But instead, I just want to talk about outcomes. And this has been touched upon. But you know, most of the research so far um, has been on process and social need outcomes with less on, on downstream health outcomes, as we've heard. And I thought it might be useful to think about kind of a more traditional medical analogy. So let's take, for example, a statin drug to decrease cholesterol. So that might look like a doctor prescribing statin, and then the process outcome there is that your patient takes the statin. And the intermediate outcome is, a, say, a five-point decrease in LDL. But ultimately, what you care about as a physician and as a patient is how that might affect somebody's cardiovascular mortality or other um, outcomes that are important for patient health. Now, contrast that a bit to an example with a social need. With this example, you know, from a health system perspective, 
probably we do care most about that, that health outcome, the fewer hospital days or the better health outcomes. But from a societal perspective, we also care about that intermediate outcome. Unlike the LDL example where like a five-point difference in your LDL doesn't really have any intrinsic value, giving somebody who's homeless housing does have an intrinsic value. Um, and, you know, it's, it's undeniably good uh, that we're giving people food who need food and housing who need housing. But I think as a group we need to think more together about what sort of outcomes we really care about and what we're looking for. And of course, just a note that's been made, but um, just theoretically, we would expect that some of our social needs-based interventions are going to take a while uh, to result in a health effect, and how can we address that as researchers? So I just wanted to end on, on this note, um, and, and that's that there's, there's great expertise um, in the healthcare system on social determinants, but in a way, we're, we're really kind of dabbling um, in other people's territory in some ways. Um, and in all of our research and our work in general, I think it's really important that we involve the experts from the stakeholders out of sectors outside of the healthcare system. Um, and I think that uh, that we need to do some more thinking about like what our end game is. And when we think about what our end game is, we need to take this universal view. So, for example, what I'm talking about is to me, if all of our work. Um, kind of uh, in this in this sphere kind of just results in more money going to the healthcare sector so that things like uh, housing and food insecurity increasingly need to be funded through healthcare because that's the only place where the money is that's not really a win um, and so you know i think we can invest in healthcare system based social interventions which i i do think that there's real value there um, but how do we strike the balance uh, with investing directly in social service systems and overall we need to do some more thinking on what's the best role for us as the healthcare system. Thank you.